All right, we'll take a little break from high school football to check in with the new champions of the Atlantic League. Let's go live to Barbara Bar at Clipper Magazine Stadium, where it's hard to tell if that's rain or champagne that's falling. Barbara? Yeah, yes, if only champagne. It's actually rain, Mike. We've had a little bit of everything here tonight. Rain. Plenty of dramatic comebacks, but the Barnstormers just moments ago clinched their second Atlantic League title by beating Sugarland 8 to 7 in 13 innings. And this is the game winner. It was tied at 7 going to the bottom of the 13th, and Gabe Jacobo, his second home run of the night, this was your game winner, sending the Barnstormers to the big 8 to 7 come from behind win. Over Sugarland, they came back time and time again, and then the big celebration kicking off as the rain was coming down here at Clipper Magazine Stadium. It was really one of the more dramatic finishes of the year. You can't get much better than that. They had the trophy presentation, but right now the Barnstormers, they don't mind the rain. They are celebrating the championship in 13 innings, 8 to 7, a come from behind win, and they did, came from behind several times during this game to win it 8 to 7. Mike. Wow, a walk-off win. That is certainly the most dramatic victory ever in team history. Congratulations to the Barnstormers. We continue now with uh, Football Friday and the number one team in our grade 8 poll, Bishop McDevitt, traveling to one of their rivals, Susquehanna Township. Township still looking for its first win of the season. Indians have the ball. Ben Moser drops back to pass. Stumbles. He should have been whistled down. So Anthony Long, 6'3", 295 pounds, makes sure that Moser is down. The Crusaders get the ball and go to the air. Check out the strike by Nick Marcillo to Kyrie Kelly. Deep into Indians territory, they punched it in from short range moments later to take a 13-0 lead. Susquehanna Township comes right back. Moser with a gorgeous deep ball to Jaquan Blair. And they're not going to catch him. 62 yards on the score. Indians are on the board. McDevitt. Backed up to its own 10-yard line. And watch how much time Marcelo has here. Waiting, waiting, then firing to Kobe White. He's got it. And is he going to go? Yes! 90 yards on the pitch and catch. McDevitt rolls 49-7 to stay perfect at 6-0. To the York Adams League, Biglerville visiting DeLone Catholic. Second quarter, DeLone with the ball. Tavian Dorsey. Check out this run on the reverse. Some great moves here as he cuts it back up right in between these two defenders. They finally trip him up at the 16. And that would set them up for this. A pitch to Lucas Scholl. He goes around the left side, and it's 9 0 Squires. Still in the second quarter, Biglerville trying to make the comeback. Back to pass. It's thrown out to Scott Cooper, who gives them a big first down deep into DeLone territory. They would get it in for a touchdown moments later, but DeLone goes on to win this one, 18-6. Fairfield hosting Hanover in another York Adams showdown. First quarter, it's fourth down for Hanover. Kyle Kraut gets it to Dylan Krager. He goes 20 yards and down right at the goal line, but they failed to score. Later, another fourth down for the Nighthawks. Kraut loses the ball. Austin Ivy hops on it, giving the Knights the football. Krieger taking the handoff for the Nighthawks. He cuts across field, averts a few tacklers, and is in, or so he thinks. Play was called back for an illegal shift. Hanover just couldn't catch a break. End of the half now. Fairfield with the ball. Mason Flickinger tossed it up to Alex Irwin for the score. No, it's not a score. He was out of bounds just barely. Another lost opportunity in the first half. Both teams exploded offensively in the second half. Fairfield wins it 18-12 to over Hanover. That's going to do it for week six of Football Friday. We leave you with the Elko Raider marching band. For all the Football Friday crew, I'm Mike Hostetler. Have a great weekend.